All right, so there's a couple spots when you're building a schoolie where if you get general construction advice from someone, it's not going to apply to a bus. Well, we're not doing that. All right, so I made a, a little bit of a tactical error. Hey guys, welcome back to Tale of Two Smitties. Thanks for checking out another episode. Before we get into this week's video, we wanted to update you on a couple of things. So the first thing is that we got stickers in. So for $3, you can buy a sticker, support our build. Or if you are a fellow schoolie van lifer and you wanna swap with stickers you have, let us know. Probably the best way will be to comment below or even better, follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Tale of Two Smitties. Second thing is that my dad's coming back. So the first several videos we did, you'd have seen him and we got a lot done when he was here uh, a little while back and uh, we're super excited to have him back. So actually, by the time you're watching this, he'll be here. Today's Thursday, he's coming in Friday and uh, now it is Sunday. So <laughs> he'll have been here already and we'll get started on some projects. So a lot more to come and a lot of progress to come, like visual progress over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. And the last update that we wanna share is more on the personal side of our lives. Um, for the month of July, we both wanted to do something that kind of improves us, betters us as people. Um, so we decided to take on a couple challenges. I am going to do the Plastic Free July Challenge, which for me, I'm going to stop using single-use bottled beverage containers. So I'm not going to use bottled water. I'm going to be refilling my Yeti, swell bottles, whatever, stuff like that. And I'm also going to do round two of the minimalism game, which if you don't know what that is, we have a whole video on it. Check that out. <laughs> Check that out. Um, what that's all about. And I'm going to do it and hopefully get rid of 500 more things. We also have a blog post about it on our website um, along with Laura's video, and we'll link that in the description below where you can check it out on taleoftwosmitties.com. So I'm not a runner, but I have wanted to start uh, jogging and running, uh, and every time I try to do that, I'll run a mile one day, and the next day I'll be sore and I won't do it again. So I'm taking a very miniature version of uh, what Jesse Itzler did a couple months ago called the Calendar Club. Hey guys, so listen, this month I'm doing this challenge called the Calendar Club. This is what it is. Every day you run the amount of miles that corresponds to the day of the month it is. So February 1, one mile. February 2, two miles, three miles, all the way up till February 29th. So today's the 23rd, it's a 23 bagger for me today. I'm not doing that. Uh, I don't run, so I'm not doing that but I am gonna do a 10th of that. So on the first week, it sounds really dumb. I ran a 10th of a mile on July 1st, two tenths of a mile on July 2nd, but by the end of the month, I'll be running two miles, 2.1, two, three, four, all the way to 3.1 miles on July 31st, which I've never run back-to-back -back days. Uh, I've run more than two miles twice in my life. So um, <laughs> for me, it's a big deal, but if you're a runner, I know it's gonna sound like it. So silly. So keep us accountable on these challenges. And if you're gonna do anything in July, uh, challenge-wise, habit-wise, uh, comment below, let us know what it is. We'd love to stay in touch with you uh, and keep each other accountable. And this is a perfect time. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, follow along with our whole journey. Um, every subscriber helps and we love making these videos and wanna keep making them for more and more people. And smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't let that change your mind. Please don't like. So with all that being said, let's get into this week's video. This week we tackled cabinet installation of our kitchen cabinets, pantry, and our wood storage box. So take a look. Here we go. <laughs> pipe here, the drain pipe, is wider. It's an inch and a half pipe, wider than the two by two here. And so we're going to have to just cut a little notch in the cabinet here. Uh, it's an open back cabinet, so it'll just be on the side here and on the side here. Just a small notch. So there's a 
couple spots when you're building a schoolie where if you get general construction advice from someone, it's not going to apply to a bus. There's very few instances where that's the case, but being level is one of them. We didn't talk about this when we did the walls, uh, but we use the same principle. So if you think of building a house, the foundation's level, they build all the walls, they frame the walls up level, everything's level in a house. Well, on a bus, the only way to do that is to jack up all four corners of the bus on jacks and build your entire bus that way. Well, we're not doing that and we're parked in a parking lot that slopes away and so our bus is out of level. So here's the trick. You take a level and you figure out how out of level the bus is. As you can see here, we're a little bit out of level. So then you take your level and you put it up on the cabinets and you wanna get the level to be the same amount out of level. And what we're figuring out here is that the uh, cabinets are plumb or flush to the bus. So they're level with each other because when the bus is level, we want the cabinets to be level. Am I confusing you yet? And we do that using shims. And so, whereas uh, this spot here, we're gonna have a corner bracket here, a 90, um, while this one is uh, relatively even, uh, the one down here had to be pushed out a little bit to get this the right amount out of level, right amount in level. Have I lost you yet? And the same principle applies uh, front to back of the bus, which would be left to right on the cabinet. So let's look at that. So the bus is just a hair out of level front to back. And we've made the cabinets oh, not quite enough. I'm gonna have to adjust that. We're gonna want it other way. We're gonna want it right about, if I remember correctly, I took a picture right about here. So I made a, a little bit of a tactical error. Uh, the back of the kitchen cabinets, the sink cabinet are open. And so we were able to notch these out. No problem. Cabinet can get installed. Pipe's not in the way. Well, then we got to the drawers, which I checked. Okay, there's a back, can notch out the whole back. But oh wait, down here, the rail is anchored to the back, not to the side. And I don't know why I didn't expect that. I just expected it to be anchored to the side. And the exact spot where that's at, literally the center of that base, uh, of that anchor, is the center of the pipe on the wall. And so we would need to cut that whole thing out. So I'm gonna take tonight and think about it. I've got a couple ideas, as I'm sure some of you are thinking right now. Uh, you know, maybe an idea pop in your head, try this or try that. I've got a couple ideas, uh, but I'm gonna think on it. I sent my dad a picture and uh, I think I know what I'm gonna do. But again, in the interest of being prudent, I'm not being prudent. If I was prudent, I wouldn't have gotten in this mess. I would have checked already, but not making a bad thing worse. I think what we landed on is taking a half inch, uh, take like a half inch uh, plywood, cut it in strips and put those strips on here and then re-bracket this onto the strip. So basically bring this cabinet out a half inch so that I can do that on the drawer here. So everything will come out an extra half inch. So all we'll lose is a half inch of living space. I think that's the right way to do it. I mean, right way, the right way is to not be in this situation, but I think the best fix is that. Let's do this. We'll stop for 10 seconds. You guys leave a comment, let us know what you think. And we'll go from there. So go ahead, leave us a comment. What do you, how do you think we should fix it? Uh, okay, 
That's it for today. Rolling. Probably not putting this in the video. I'm not gonna show that I messed it up and then we're redoing it. Okay. Okay. So the trick is when to screw this in to not let it suck and move the cabinet. So if you yeah, if you can lean on that corner there. So I ended up getting the cabinet installed. Uh, corner bracket here, corner bracket here, here, and then this one I had to shim to get everything uh, level. And I'm gonna need to put a shim just real small under the base there to keep that off the ground and not let it pull. Well, we're making some progress here. Got two of the cabinets installed. Third one's just dry fitted. Actually, we moved it to be able to hold the table up. That's our new tool table. Just made trip number 8,000 to Lowe's, it feels like. Uh, Laura's at the bus, uh, swapping out some windows, and uh, I'm heading back. Welcome back, here we are. We are going to swap out two of our windows. We had the emergency exit window here, which opens out. Um, and then this was just a regular school bus window like all the other ones, but we're going to flip them because our desk is gonna be right here. And we figured it would be way better to have a beautifully opening window in front of our desk than half behind our pantry, which is gonna be here. So yeah, I'm not sure. There's some, I'm gonna vacuum this obviously and, and wipe it. There's a little bit in here, but I think, I think it's clean enough. Let me know if I'm way off. Bus looks like right now. Emergency window, other window, big gaps. I hope I'm cleaning these enough. If anyone's out there is watching and has an opinion, let that focus. We're pretty fortunate. This is not a whole lot of work went into this, cleaning the silicone. There's some gunk in the corners, but I think I got enough of it. Hey guys, so we've been trying to figure out how we were gonna do our pantry. We wanted to have a floor to ceiling cabinet um, across from our kitchen. And Laura had said, hey, we've got these bookshelves in the bedroom. Let's cut those down and we can put those next to each other. So I've been cutting the tops down, uh, curved to match the bus. And uh, I glued them together and screwed them together today. And um, we're getting ready to install them. So I'll show you those here in a sec. And then also because they're floor to ceiling, they're gonna be in front of the bus windows. And just to make it less obvious, uh, we're gonna paint the back of them black. So that's what I'm getting ready to do now. So watch and see. So 
this is where the base cabinet's gonna be going, right here. Uh, this is our bed, the foot of the bed, and uh, it's gonna sit right up against here. So the first thing we've gotta do is work around this inlet for the, for the fuel tank. This is where we pump our diesel. And so we're gonna have to cut out a little notch in the back of the cabinet. It's gonna fit snug up against the foot of the bed and up against the wall. And so we'll cut this out and show you what it's like. And I'm gonna show you what it's like. All right, so here we go. Um, I was supposed to cut it a touch higher, uh, but this is where the toe kick, the floor of the cabinet is. So I'm hoping that because this isn't gonna sit all the way back and it's gonna be out here, which is a little, well, it's gonna be out here, which is a little bit lower. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get away with this much below the line. If not, I'll have to go back and cut it, but here's hoping. This is what happens when you make changes in your bus without thinking of everything else that impacts. That's not gonna work. All right, I think what we're gonna do is just move this support over a couple inches so we can move the whole box over. Uh, which should be simple. I mean, we've got some wires in place, but I think as long as we can keep everything together, just move it boop, over to there, should be fine. I think that's the simplest. We can give it a shot, and if it doesn't work, we can do something else. So let's try that. Hey, get back to work. I am working. Instagram. Tell it to me.